Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our senior workshop, Developing and Refining Your College Application List. My name is Elisa Berner. I'm the co-host of tonight's event and counselor for students with the last names A through FEL. Ms. Ho will be responding to questions in the chat. Ms. Ho, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, sorry, I was having unmuting issues. So hi, I'm Mrs. Ho, I am one of the counselors. I am, um, my caseload is F-E-M through L-I-M. Great, thank you. And uh, Ms. Ramirez will be admitting people as they come into the waiting room. Ms. Ramirez, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm Mrs. Ramirez and I have the caseload of L-I-M through R-O-G. Good evening. Great. Thank you. And Ms. Cudmore will be presenting with me tonight. Ms. Cudmore, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mrs. Cudmore. I am the counselor for students whose last names are R-O-H through Z, through the end of the alphabet. Thank you for joining us tonight. Oftentimes, students don't know where to start. They may have an idea of a career path, but that doesn't really fit them. For example, I was a business major, and that was until I took accounting and economics. I had, if I had taken the time to do the research and determine if that was a good fit for a major and a career, I would have saved myself both time and money. You need to write down things you're interested in. Do you have any passions? What are they? What is important to you? What are your core values? And where do you see yourself in five years? How about 10? On Naviance, there's a personality assessment that can help you identify these personality traits called do what you are. Also on californiacolleges.edu, you can do an interest profile that leads to career exploration and career search that helps you match those interests to a career. So when you're deciding your, your college list, there's a couple different things that you want to consider, um, you know, lenses that you want to make your decisions um, based on. Um, the three main areas that we suggest students really take a look and consider are your personal interest, your academic goals, and your financial situation. Um, and we're going to go through each of these individually a little bit more. But, um, you know, it's not just about the college finding the right students that are the fit for their campus, but it's also for you to find the right fit for your college. So making sure that it goes both ways and that you're picking a college that is, um, you know, has the things that you're interested in, has the uh, major that you're looking for, um, all the different criteria that you might consider when you're deciding which colleges to apply to. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's not just the college choosing the students that are being admitted, but it's also about you choosing the right college that is the right fit for you. Uh, for financial considerations, uh, just some questions to ask yourself. How much am I or my family willing to spend? Um, how do I have a college savings account? And how much is that college savings account actually going to cover? Is it one year's worth of tuition? Is it half of your college tuition? Is it the full college tuition? Um, are you planning to go to graduate school after your undergraduate degree? And is that going to cost more money as well? Um, so really, how much money do you have saved up? And um, is that or is that not a factor in deciding where you're going to attend college? Um, the call is, we'll talk a little bit about financial aid tonight. We'll have some more information in some of our other presentations, but uh, making sure that you're checking with financial, the financial information for the college, that it's not always the sticker price of what they say that their tuition costs, but what is what your... Is your your financial package. Uh, what are they offering to you um, as your family's contribution? What is your family expected to contribute? And then what is the college willing to offer you in maybe um, loans or grants or uh, potentially scholarships? Um, there's lots of scholarships that are out there. It does take some work to be able to look up the scholarships and uh, do the applications. Um, oftentimes they require you to answer questions, um, write an essay, get letters of recommendation. Um, and the scholarships take some time to complete the application and they take some time for you to find them. So um, if that's what you're planning on doing is using scholarships towards your uh, 
financial cost of the college, you want to make sure that you're doing the research now and you're finding those scholarships to apply to um, because they uh, sometimes it takes some time for you to find them or for you to get those applications completed and done. Um, and then financial aid, the FAFSA opens October 1st. So that's just in a couple weeks or next week, I think it is. Um, so make sure that you are prepared and ready to fill out the FAFSA if you are looking to get some financial aid for college. You definitely wanna try and get that done earlier rather than later. Um, I've heard some people describe it as uh, like getting in line for money. So the more mo the people who are in line first get more money, the people who come at the end, there's less money for them to get. So you wanna be one of those first families that is filling out the FAFSA um, when it opens on October 1st and uh, get yourself in line at those colleges for the money that they do have available. So those financial considerations are really important for you to discuss with your parents, um, talk about as a family and not wait until April and March when it's time to make the decision of where you're going and you have your heart set on a college and your parents at that point say, sorry, we can't afford it. That's not the kind of conversation you wanna be having at that last minute. So make sure you're having those conversations as a family early enough, um, even possibly before you apply to some of those colleges that maybe are out of your range financially. Uh, personal, some questions to ask yourself. Really, this kind of goes along with the those questions about what is your fit. Um, what is important to you when you're applying to colleges? Um, is the major the most important part of your application to a college, making sure that they have the right major? Believe it or not, we've had many students apply to colleges that don't offer the major that they're planning to go into, and they're disappointed when they end up getting into that college, but it does not have the major that they were planning to uh, have. So make sure you're doing your research. Um, also check, look deeper into the major because sometimes the major might have the same name as the same major at another college, but they offer different classes or they have a different, different emphasis in the program. Um, I tell students a lot of times about my experience as a psychology major. You think psychology is a pretty broad field and that if you go to any college and you major in psychology, you're gonna be taking the same classes, but that's actually not the case. Um, the college that I went to uh, actually had a humanistic focus on their psychology classes. So it was a lot about the uh, relationships with people, your personality development, um, how to work with people, um, your lifespan development over time, which was what I was looking for, but I didn't realize it at the time. And then when I looked at other colleges and saw that their psychology classes were more focused on brain research, uh, psychological disorders, um, some things that were great and interesting, but it just wasn't necessarily what I wanted my focus to be for my major. So both psychology majors, just different universities and different emphasis that they had on their programs. So if you have the ability to look a little deeper, look at that college, check out the major, and then see what kinds of classes are you gonna be taking? And is that what you're intending to study when you're in college? Um, also- That's funny because I, I talk about that later too. So that's definitely something we really wanna emphasize that um, you wanna look not just at the college, but at the major, at the classes and what their areas. But that, that, exactly, I talk about that later too. Yeah, and it really it wasn't something that I knew when I was a high school student, I would never have known to do that and to look. Um, and like I said, I chose the college because I wanted to go to the college, not because of the specific major, but later on was so glad that it was the right fit for me um, because I wouldn't have been as happy taking classes that weren't what I was looking for. Um, also looking at programs and clubs and organizations and what does the college have to offer? You're, this is going to be your home away from home for the next few years if you're planning to live on campus or even live at home but spend a lot of time on campus. Um, are there certain clubs that you're interested in joining? Are there certain sports teams you're excited to cheer for? Um, are you interested in Greek life? That can be a big part of some campuses while at other campuses they either don't have Greek life or it's not as big a um, part of, of the campus. So what is it that's important to you? When you picture yourself going to college, do you have this vision in your head of what you're looking for? Um, I've been to several different colleges, um, two undergrad colleges and two graduate schools. I transferred a couple times, um, but different. I went to a large school with big sports teams and uh, lots of clubs and organizations, a really big Greek life. And then I transferred to a smaller school um, that only had a couple 
sororities and fraternities and not as many sports teams. And so it just was different experience. You know, one's not better than the other. It just depends what you're looking for and um, what you envision when you picture yourself going to college. Um, so large school versus small school, they do feel very differently and they can um, have a really different vibe when you're on campus. So the next the next ones kind of all go together. Um, so large school versus small school, what part of the country are you looking for? Um, and what's the vibe of the campus or the culture on the campus? Those are all really important things to consider because colleges are all really different. And unless you've been able to go visit some or um, you know, if you've done some of the virtual tours, you might get a good sense of what it's like to be at that campus, um, but they can feel really different. A college campus that's in the middle of a city feels very different than a rural campus um, that maybe is the only thing in town or the main thing in town. Um, so it just depends again, what you're looking for and what is important to you. Um, the class sizes can make a big difference. So uh, some of the larger universities do have large lecture halls, couple hundred students in a lecture hall. Um, although right now that might look a little differently with the virtual learning, but once we're back on campus, you know, are you okay being in a large um, a large setting with lots of students in class, or do you prefer a smaller school, smaller class sizes? Um, again, one school I went to psychology class was 500 students in a big lecture hall. Another school I went to psychology classes were no more than 35 students. So it really just depends what you're looking for. Do you like that small school um, vibe or do you prefer to be at a larger school with lots of opportunities and lots of people there and lots of clubs and lots of things going on? Um, so just really thinking about what it is that you want. Um, weather can be an important factor to consider. Um, if, you're, if you're a beach person, you love going to the beach, maybe don't apply to colleges in the northern part of the country where it's cold for half the year. Um, you know, does that matter to you or does it not matter to you? Or is it enticing to go somewhere that's different because you've lived in San Diego your whole life and you've never experienced the different seasons and what it's like to live in the snow. Um, so is that something that's important? Because remember the, the time of year that you're going to be there is through those winter months. So do you want that experience or is that not something that you're looking for? Um, and I kind of touched on this, but just the culture and the vibe of the campus, I think is something really important to consider. Um, campuses all feel very differently. If you have a chance to go visit some campuses, I would highly recommend it if you haven't already done so. Um, there might not be as many people on the campus now, but you can probably get a sense for what it's like. Um, and doing a lot of the virtual tours. We're gonna show you in a little bit some of the virtual tours. So that's a really good way to um, get that sense of that vibe on the campus. And then the academic, obviously this is an important part of the application. So are you a good fit for that college academically? Is your GPA in the range of the students who are applying there? Do you have a good chance of getting in? Um, are they taking test scores this year? Are they requiring SAT or ACT scores? Have you taken those tests? Are you prepared to apply to a college that is still requiring it? Um, we've heard from a lot of colleges, um, hundreds of them that say that they're not gonna be using test scores for this year's senior class, uh, but you need to do that research and really confirm with those colleges that you're applying to to make sure that that's not part of the application process and that it may or may not be considered for scholarships or grants or other um, specific programs you might be applying to. Um, but if it is required, again, are you in that range of those average test scores that they're looking for? Um, and then AP classes, does that, do they accept the AP credit? Does that give you an advantage when you're applying to that school or attending that school or does it not? So just kind of looking at all those different considerations as you're trying to narrow down your list. Yeah, so now that you kind of looked at those parameters around financial, personal, and academic, it's time to do more research. You want to identify your priorities. And a lot of this that I'm going to go over, Ms. Kenmore um, already hit on it, but location. Remember, this might be your chance to explore another region. How big of a school do you want? Do you thrive in a smaller class where you can get to know your professors, or are you okay with several hundred students? I went to Chico. I had very small class sizes. I knew my professors. My husband went to UCSD, had huge classrooms, um, never knew his professors, always had to deal with the, um, the TA. So it was just a completely different experience. Um, does that school offer your area of study? Again, I highly recommend that you review the course pathway for your major and read the actual course description for each class you will be taking. And do this for 
every single school you're thinking of applying. Uh, the same major, like Ms. Kunmar said, the same major at different schools will be different. Make sure you're applying to what it is you have in mind for your course of study. If not, don't apply. Um, the other thing to consider is the environment and the extracurriculars, like Ms. Kenmore said. Um, do you love going to sporting events? You know, do they have do they have teams that you would want to be a participant in? Are you vegan? Do they have dining options that will meet your needs? Once you have identified these things, you'll need to start to research if the school is a fit for you academically. On your spreadsheet, did I mention that you're going to need to write all this down and keep track of it? And along with your priorities, I actually have a sample in just a moment. But what is their average GPA um, admit rate? What is it for Westview students? Um, oftentimes, that they're, that's different. Um, so this data can be accessed on Naviant. Um, is there a rep from the school going to be hosting a virtual college visit? The calendar on the counseling page on the Westview website shows these. Um, can you visit in person and take a tour? I was on a bunch of um, websites today and they're still offering tours on a lot of campuses. Um, and then the big thing is to attend college fairs. I know we have our PUSD college fair coming up. I think it is October 20th. Um, so that's just one sample of a college fair. There's lots and lots of college fairs. Um, other factors to consider is that cost benefit, you know, that budget. Student debt is real. <laughs> you ask anybody, student debt is real and you want to avoid it when at all possible. Would a two-year college get you where you want to go and then transfer to a four-year? That's what I did. Would attending a private college be more budget family? Don't know. But schools have a net price calculator on their website, so you really want to compare the cost. Um, here are, on slide 10, you can see four websites that will help you with finding the school that will fit all the requirements you have. There's the College Board Big Future, CapEx, College Insight, and Unigo. Um, all of them are very dynamic and really pull that data that you're looking for because we really, really want you to look beyond the schools that you just know, beyond San Diego State, beyond UCSD, beyond Berkeley. We want you to branch out and look at schools that are gonna be the right fit for you. So here's a sample of a spreadsheet I mentioned earlier. Um, this happens to be one um, that my daughter, we developed together. Um, so looking at the schools, looking at the location, the major, you know, the website, what their in-state tuition is, or if they offer the WUI, which is the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, which is states on the West Coast outside of California offer scholarship opportunities for students from California. How much is housing? What the net price calculator is, like I said, you take your own personal information and put it into that college's um, net price calculator website and it will give you different um, uh, amounts. So how much is it gonna cost to attend? What's the enrollment size? What's their acceptance rate? Um, the other big thing that people don't look at is that first year retention rate. How many students are happy there and return after their first year? Um, yeah, so, and then those, you can keep going on this spreadsheet as far as those other priorities for you. Um, you really wanna, like even this, this this list too low is too long. Some of these schools definitely have to come up, you know. So um, you really want to shrink your list, and we'll talk about more about the academic fit. But you really want to shrink your list. But all of those priorities that you've identified, you'll want on the spreadsheet. Okay, so um, the virtual tours are a must. Uh, they're often embedded on the school's website. But if you go to uvisit.com, not only do they host all of these um, virtual tours, but there's a filter you can see that you can put in some of those requirements you identified, such as location, size, tuition cost, and then it will show you the campus videos that meet your selection. So here I probably chose some of the Western states, yeah, Oregon, California, Wyoming, uh, Utah. So it just, just by choosing some of those, shrinking down those. So it's a really, really cool website. So again, it's called um, uvisit.com. So uh, 
um, we talked a little bit last week. Hopefully you all joined us last week at our sen first senior workshop. Um, we're, we are using Naviance for our seniors for sending your transcripts and your letters of rec. And that's where you're going to enter your colleges that you're applying to. Um, so Naviance is still going to be the main hub for our seniors this year of um, your applications and communicating with your counselors and your teachers and the people that need to send those documents on your behalf. Um, but we also are going to be incorporating SCORE um, because our college visits are accessible to all grade levels. So as we're transitioning our ninth through 11th graders over to SCORE as their main system, um, we had to have one place to kind of keep those college visits consistent for everybody. So for you guys, you will also be able to sign up for the college visits in SCORE. Um, if you don't have your account set up yet, you can um, uh, take a screenshot of the um, QR code there or um, on our, this presentation will be available as well on our website. So you can click on the links to sign up for your score account or to register for your score account. Um, and that's where you can see the colleges that are vis visiting. Um, they're all pretty much virtual visits at this point. Um, and they're scheduled either during the lunch period during the day or um, I think during, I'm not sure if it was during office hours, maybe a couple during the office hours and then after school. Um, so we didn't want to interrupt the class time, um, whereas normally we kind of have them spread throughout the day, but we wanted to keep your periods um, so you could be accessing your classes virtually. So a lot of the visits are scheduled for after school hours um, this time, but it's a great way for you to hear from the admissions reps from a lot of these schools. Um, the college rep visits are an opportunity to ask your questions to someone who represents that campus. A lot of times they might be someone who actually works in the admissions office and potentially could be the person who is reviewing your application when you apply. So having that chance to talk with that college rep um, in a small group setting or sometimes even one on one if you're the only person who shows up to that college visit. Um, it can be a great opportunity to make that connection with that person. Um, and maybe it's not the person who's reviewing your application, but it's just someone who really knows the campus really well. And you can ask those questions that you um, may not find on the website or may not get from touring the campus. Um, so you can think of your own questions. It's great if you can be creative and think of some questions um, or you can look at some of the uh, resources on Online. We have some of the questions posted here, um, but there's also you can just Google questions to ask a college rep and it'll come up with a whole lot of questions. Um, and we should have resources in our Canvas class as well. Um, so questions like what makes your college unique? Um, what are some of the programs that you're known for? Um, what are the housing options on campus? Are there some popular clubs that students are involved in? These are the kinds of things that the college reps tend to know. Um, the one I always like to ask or find out about is what are the traditions? What are the fun traditions on your college campus? Because pretty much every college has some crazy traditions that the students do. Um, and that's not necessarily gonna be something that you're gonna find on the website. So um, asking some of those questions about what is it really like to be a student at whatever university that is. Um, that's, you know, a great way to uh, get to know it a little bit better, get to know the campus, and then, like I said, potentially get to know somebody who could be working in the admissions office at that campus. It's always great to follow up with a thank you card or a little note. Um, just to get your name out there again. It was so nice meeting you. Um, if you have any additional information, I'd love to connect with you again. Um, you don't want to send too much to them or, or send too many emails because they're uh, going to a lot of schools and they're meeting a lot of students, but just that one or two extra times that you can connect with them could potentially um, put your name out there and they might remember that conversation that they had with you. So it's a great way to um, get that, that small group connection with that college rep. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so we often get a lot of questions about what and, and confusion really around the two versus four year schools. So um, the two year schools, you can do all of your general education and then transfer to a four year school to finish out your degree. Um, the other thing about two year schools that are great is for any kind of trade. So if um, you want to learn how to do, you know, hair, plumbing, EMT, um, cooking, et cetera, those are gonna be your two-year schools to get that trade uh, training. Um, then the four-year schools, go ahead with the next slide. Um, so here's the different uh, routes. 
So if you go straight to a four-year school, you're doing your general education, your major preparation, your major requirements, your graduation requirements, all at that four-year school. Um, you're starting off as a freshman, you're getting to know people, you're probably living in the dorms, you're, you're getting connected. And the second route is you're doing your two years of general education at the, at the community college, uh, ours locally are Miramar, Palomar, Mesa, Grossmont, et cetera. And uh, you're preparing for your major, and then you can either do a guaranteed admission contract to transfer, or you apply like you are now um, to make that transfer, and you're considered a transfer student. And you go to the four-year university and finish off your last two years to finish with that major. And that you do your upper division major requirements as well as your um, um, upper division general education requirements. Um, the same thing kind of goes around um, public versus private schools. Um, public schools are funded by the state. Tuition is typically lower, um, but they often aren't able to offer as much financial aid package. Um, and that's just generally. There's gonna be larger class size, definitely. And for the UCs, UCs are research schools. So your professors are, are focused on doing the research and then the TAs are providing the academic support to the students. Um, in your CSUs, they're typically smaller class sizes and it's not research focused. It's more preparing you um, for a job when you're done with that four-year education. Private schools are kind of all over the board with that. Um, tuition's usually always higher, but then again, they have big endowments where they're able to offer more financial aid. So really, it doesn't, it, it depends. Um, and private schools, the out-of-state tuition is, is the same as in-state tuition. So you're not gonna have those differences. Um, we have found that trying to show videos through Zoom isn't successful, but I highly recommend that you um, watch this video um, on your own time. Uh, it's one of my favorites, and it just helps you um, with your kind of your frame of mind as you approach this research that you're doing and these decisions that you're going to be making. So really it's, start, it's time to start organizing your list of colleges at this point. We're kind of mid to late September. Um, so it's okay to still be doing some research, but you really wanna start narrowing down your list and finalizing your list because you wanna get started on those applications and um, all the other supplemental material that might be required, whether they're, it's writing essays or sending a resume in, getting letters of recommendation. So there's a lot that goes into the application pieces themselves. So you know, at this point, you really want to start kind of finalizing that list. Um, we divide, we, when we talk about colleges that you're applying to, we use these different terms, three terms. Um, people call them different things, but essentially there are schools that are considered safety schools. So these are schools that you are likely to get into. Um, there are schools that are, you know, you have a GPA that's higher than the average. Your test scores, if they're required, are probably higher than the average. Um, there are schools that are that in that high probability that you're gonna get accepted to them. Target schools are schools that are pretty much right in your range. So you might be right in that target range for your GPA or your test scores. Um, they're pretty much the right fit for you, not too easy to get into, but not too hard to get into either. So, you know, kind of those schools that you really wanna focus on being your top priorities or your top schools that you're interested in. And then the REACH schools or the, the schools that you've always dreamed of attending. Um, you might have a lower GPA or lower test scores, or maybe um, you haven't been involved as, as, in as many things as, as what they might be looking for. Um, so it's kind of that dream or that REACH school. So when we talk about applying to schools, you want to have a number of schools in each of these categories. Um, we always say strive towards this pyramid. We're gonna show you another pyramid in a minute, but this pyramid. So we'll start at the bottom. So three to four schools that are in your likely range, that are in your safety as another term range. So your GPA test scores are above average. So you're likely to get into these three to four schools that are on your list. 
target schools, two to three schools. So two to three schools that are right in your range. They are top of your list. You're really interested in them and you have a really high probability of getting accepted to those schools. So you wanna have about two to three of those on your list of colleges. And then one to two reach schools. So one to two schools that are your dream school or your, you know, that school that you have always wanted to go to. Um, there's not necessarily a, a high probability that you'll get accepted, but you never know. So you're going to apply and you want to see if you have that chance to get into that school. What we find with Westview students is they apply like this instead. So they do one to two likely schools maybe two to three target schools, and then a whole bunch of reach schools. So when we get students list every year, we're looking at the schools that they're applying to, and there are a high number of reach schools, um, which, you know, is not a bad thing, except that you may not get accepted to as many schools as you're hoping to get accepted to. And in the end, what that means is you may not have as many schools to choose from. So if you're only accepting, if you're only applying to one or two likely schools and then one or two target schools, that may mean in the end you have between two to four colleges to choose from because maybe you were not accepted to those other schools. So what we tell students is really get familiar with your likely and target schools, really focus in on those and make those your main priority as you're going through the application process because those are the ones you're most likely to get accepted to. And be excited about them because there's so many great schools out there and I'll talk about this for days. There are so many great colleges out there that you can learn to love and that you may just not even know about at this point. Um, and once you go to those schools, you won't know any different had you chosen to go somewhere else because you're gonna meet people there, you're gonna get involved, you're gonna find um, connections, you're gonna meet your professors. And so there, you know, there's just so many opportunities that are out there for you that give yourself the highest chance of getting accepted to a number of schools. So then you get to decide which is the right fit for you instead of applying to schools, maybe not getting in and then having limited choices on where you can choose come May when you need to make that decision on where you're attending. So I'm gonna go back, show you the last pyramid again. So this is what we want you guys to really focus on. Three to four schools that you are likely to get into, two to three schools that are in your target range. So again, also likely to get into, but not kind of guaranteed or for sure. And then one to two reach schools. So that one to two schools that you've always dreamed of going to and would love to go to if you get accepted. And I would caution um, the UCs, uh, go back to that pyramid, I would caution um, people thinking that UCs are their target, um, especially like UCSD. We've had a lot of students think it was their target and it's not, um, you know, so just, just be care, just be cautious of that. You know, I would put it up kind of towards the top of your target you know, for the UCSD, for Santa Barbara, for Berkeley, um, those are harder to get into. Um, so here's just another example. Student has a 4.3 GPA, above average test scores. They've taken a number of AP classes, uh, been involved in a lot of clubs, done some community service, They've got excellent letters of recommendation. So we've got that one to two reach schools up there, Harvard and Georgetown. This was the, this, these were the schools that that student dreamed of going to. They would love to get in there. Um, and maybe they do, maybe they have a good chance and they get accepted and that's awesome. Uh, schools that were in their target range, Wake Forest, USC, Washington and Lee, awesome schools. We're gonna show you a map in a few minutes of you know, all the colleges in the country. There's so many colleges out there. Um, and so really just doing that research helps you find some of those colleges that may not be on your immediate list because you weren't thinking about them or um, you just didn't know that they were even there, but that doesn't mean that they're not a great school and have great opportunities for you. Uh, and then some of the safety schools, San Diego State, Willamette and University of Texas. So try if you can to really look at your list and find which of these, what are the schools I'm applying to and where do they fit in these categories? And am I, am I balancing it well? Am I giving myself the best chance to get accepted to a number of colleges so I have the choice of where I want to go versus not getting into the majority of colleges and being limited to just a couple to choose from.
Ms. Berner, I think this one was yours. You're on mute. I thought it was yours. I had it down as yours. But um, really, when looking at a school and planning to apply, please consider more than the school's reputation. It's really going to need to be a good fit. Um, and, and I'll talk about that, you know, go to the next slide. So when we talk about fit, we're talking about a multitude of things. And we are getting way more early action, early decision uh, application, students applying early. Would, would you agree, Ms. Fedmore? Um, yes, but definitely. really, is it the right fit for you? You know, is it binding? If it's binding, you have to remove all of your other applications. They're not going to offer you. I mean, there's no incentive for them to offer you financial aid. Um, and does it really increase your chances? You know, now that it seems like everybody's applying early, is it really increasing your chances? And then have you done all of your research or are you applying on schools just based on their name? And then is your application, application in perfect order by these due dates? Is your essay done? And do you feel like the application's ready to showcase you in your best light? You know, really make sure that you're applying to schools that fit you, not your parents, not your friends, but you. And so this, this research does take time. And so don't rush it if you're not ready to, if your application isn't in perfect order on these early deadlines, some are as soon as next week, October 1st. Take your time, don't apply early. Um, and I subscribe to a little bit different philosophy on those REACH schools. If you are so far off, you know, you're a 3.5 and their average is a 4.4. I would save the $70 and save that time that you're doing your application. And can we take that camera and turn it off? Stop video. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, take that time and use that energy in looking at schools that fit you better. So we hear it all the time. Ms. Summer, do we hear this all the time? I won't know if I don't apply. Well, we can tell you if you're so far off the mark, you, I will tell you right now that you will not be accepted. You know, so really have, um, be honest with yourself and, and those reach schools, they're a little bit out of your bubble, but not significantly out of your bubble. Um, If the schools tell you what they're looking for, they, they're telling you with their GPA, with their test scores, with their extracurricular. And so if that isn't your profile, it's not a good fit, okay? I don't care if it's Brown or Harvard or Yale, it's not a good fit if that's not a good fit for you. That's my soapbox on that one. <laughs> um, You know, Ms. Padma, you can chime in on this too. I mean, our college admission reps say that applying early doesn't help you. Fortunately, students think it does because that data kind of shows that it does. But again, if we look at the data from the last, maybe last year, as so many students applied early, I think three quarters of my students who applied, um, applied early. So it absolutely flipped the, the a shift where it used to be a few and now it's the majority so well and it also depends on the pool of students that are applying early so it may be more competitive because maybe the pool of students that's doing the early application has a higher average gpa and, and higher statistics so it may be more competitive it just really depends on the school and what their uh, early acceptance rate is and what their applicant pool looks like. So when I say pool, I'm talking about the group of students that, uh, that's applying. So the college gets 
hundreds or thousands of applications and they need to review everybody. And so where are you in that list of students that are applying? Because they don't know you, you know, they don't know right. you're just the application at that point. Um, so does it help you or does it not? That's just what you want to really do the research on. Because in some cases it might, it might, you might have a higher chance of getting in if you do the early application. In other cases, it may not. So you really need to do that research and you really need to talk to those college reps to see, um, you know, what is the acceptance rate and what is the pool of students that normally applies early. And like Ms. Berner was saying, because it's increased year after year after year, more and more students are applying early. So those, those, um, early applicant pools are getting more competitive. Right. Whereas before it was kind of used, like years ago it was used as students who are really, really interested in that particular school. So I really wanna show, I'm just gonna choose from this list. I really wanna show Dartmouth that I am super interested. So I'm gonna apply early. I'm gonna get my application done. I'm gonna get everything in on time. So you were in essence showing that college that you have a high interest and there's a high chance that you're gonna go there. Well, now what's happened is students have applied to lots of schools early and lots of students are applying to lots of schools early. And so now the yeah. college doesn't necessarily know, is this student actually going to commit to my school? I may admit them early, but I may not find out until May where they've decided to go because now they're sitting on all these early applications um, or offers that they got in, but they're not telling me that they're getting in. So I think for colleges, it's kind of become an issue as well, because they're not sure exactly um, how to review those applications any different than their regular pool of applicants that applies for their regular deadline. Right. And so the binding agreement's even scarier because you, you're saying no matter what, no matter cost, no matter my financial aid package, anything, I'm committing to you that I'm going to to your school if accepted. And you have to write that and then you have to pull back all of your applications that you submitted once you find out. So um, it's just really important to have your applications and your colleges that you're applying to be ready and to show you in the best way possible. And sometimes you're not ready October 1st or October 15th for that on paper maybe your research isn't completely done. So, so don't rush it if you're not there. Um, make, just make sure again on these early ones that it, it's, you're complete, everything's set and you're good to go. Cause they, they're only gonna review it once. A lot of times they'll, if you are not accepted in that early review, you're rejected. Sometimes they'll roll you over to regular, but not necessarily. So just really, I, I caution you on this. So, you know, I was talking about those UCs that are going to be at the top of your target list. So here's some overall percentages of students who were accepted to UCs. Um, you know, LA, Berkeley, and San Diego being the most popular in Santa Barbara. Um, but definitely, you know, high, high. If LA is on your list, if UCLA is on your list, that should be your one reach school. That's just my opinion, but that should be your one reach school. So you really have to look at the data. It's so important students aren't looking at the data and then you're wasting time, wasting resources. So each application costs 60 to $70. So it's really important that in these times that you do your research and look at the data and be true. And I like I look at some of the numbers and it's crazy to me, you know, the number of applications. So, you know, UC Berkeley, 87,000 applications, UCLA, 111,000, and they're only admitting 13 to 14,000 students. So, um, you know, they're reviewing every year more and more and more applications. Um, and so those those percentages um, you know, while it's like, oh, 12%, that's great, but there's only 13,000 students that are getting in, and that's students from all over the country. That's not just students right. from San Diego, from Poway Unified, from Westview, you know, so they need a wide variety of students that they're accepting, so you want to look broadly also so that you can be maybe a, a school that's not on this particular list. These are all amazing schools. It's great if you get in and you, you end up going there, um, but maybe looking at other schools as well where the admit rate maybe is higher and you might be showing more diversity because you are not one of the typical students that's applying. So maybe you're from out of state or you have a unique profile to submit um, that 
provides diversity to that college as well. Um, and so sometimes you can you can be in that higher admit rate if you're looking outside the typical or traditional colleges on the list. We don't want to dissuade you from applying to these schools because a lot of you are going to apply and we want you to apply. And like I said, they're all great schools. It's just know which ones really which ones really are the ones you want to go to and which ones really are the ones that have the right that are that right fit for you because you don't need to apply to all the UCs. There's nothing that says you have to apply to all these colleges on the list every year, year after year, we get everyone, I'm sorry, we get some students who apply Checking to all, all the boxes. schools. <laughs> um, yeah, they apply to all of them. So yeah. you don't need to apply to all the UCs, pick the ones no. that are fit for you, pick the ones that you have the highest chance of getting into. And again, love those schools that you're applying to, find the ones that are the right fit and love those schools. And don't worry about the other schools because there are a lot of great ones out there. And again, just back to those highly selective um, schools, what their admit rate is. Um, and I mean, look at let's let's look at Yale. I mean, they only accepted what two thousand students, you know. Um, so just really be honest with yourself with the data. And um, again, it, you, you're going to save time and money by doing your research. So this is the map that I was referencing earlier, and we showed it to you last week in the senior meeting too. Um, for me, I just like that visually it shows how many colleges, and these are considered top colleges in the US. So there's more colleges than this, but this is just what they, the people who put this list together um, considered the top colleges in the country. But look at California and the West Coast. I mean, there's not a lot of them. Those are the colleges that we tend to know about, we tend to think about. Um, when we're looking, when we're meeting with our seniors every year, these are the colleges that I see on their list is a whole lot of the schools in the Western states. Um, but I don't see a lot of schools in the Midwest and on the East Coast, and there are a lot to choose from. There's just so many of them out there. Um, if you're willing to be adventurous and go to the other side of the country or, you know, uh, another, another region that you hadn't considered before, look at the colleges that are there. Um, I get I get brochures, I think we all do get brochures uh, in the mail or emails from colleges. And a lot of times I haven't heard of them either. It's a college I'm not familiar with. I don't know them by name, or maybe I've heard the name, but I don't know much about it. And when I start to do some research, I find some really great opportunities out there and some really cool colleges that I know would be great for a lot of our students. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, I think this is in that video that we didn't get to show, but the big fish in the small pond versus the small fish in the big pond, you know, yeah. uh, it's just kind of that attitude of like, you know, what, where do you want to be? Where do you see yourself? Who do you see yourself being in classes with? If you're applying to a college that's super competitive, everybody who's getting in is super competitive. And so then that becomes your atmosphere in your classes. You're competing against your classmates all the time. Um, and I've heard that about some of the universities um, that our students typically apply to, whereas other colleges that maybe uh, it's a really collaborative work environment. The students really work together. They're not fighting for research opportunities. They're not fighting for that one internship with that one professor that comes around every couple years, um, you know, so you check out all the different aspects of the college um, to see uh, if there are some colleges out there that could be a really good place for you. Um, and get past, again, like we said, kind of get past the name and just check out what is this college all about? Because if you ask somebody from Indiana, I'm just looking in the middle of the map here, Indiana, they might say, oh, that's an amazing college. And we just don't know about it because we live all the way in San Diego. So we haven't heard that name before, but it may be considered one of the top schools out there. So, you know, just kind of keep your keep your mind open and really look at what else is out there and what else could potentially be a good spot for you. And they like um, our California kids. They like to diversify their campus. So, for example, the Indiana um, reference, you know, they're getting a ton of students from that that region. And when they see students from California, from outside of their typical region, they really like it. So um, that, there's definitely an advantage to being a California kid trying to go to the other side of the country. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, so scholarship information, we do have a scholarship newsletter that's available on um, My Connect or Canvas um, and on our counseling website. Uh, we need to continue updating it. We will continue updating it this year. Um, if you look right now, I'm not sure if there's a whole lot on there that is current, um, but we that is something that we are going to continue working on is updating that scholarship newsletter. Um, there's also a lot of, so what goes on the scholarship newsletter is more, um, I don't want to say local because they're not just all local scholarships, but any of the local scholarships that we get. So maybe like a local PQ scholarship or um, something from a local college, um, we that would be on there. Um, but there's also so it's really kind of the ones that get sent to us, the ones that we are notified about, we add onto that scholarship list. And then there's some research done for other scholarships as well. But it's not a full complete list of scholarships because there are hundreds or thousands of scholarships that are out there. So again, the more time you invest and the more research you do, the more opportunities you might come across. So we listed some other scholarship websites that are here. Um, make sure you're doing a free search. You shouldn't pay for any scholarship sites. Um, so some free scholarship searches, um, see what else is out there. You create a profile and you put in your criteria of what you're looking for, or um, you know, maybe it's based on certain characteristics about you or certain activities you've been involved in. Um, there's a whole variety of scholarships. So the more you do your research, the more you apply, the better your chances are of getting some of those scholarships. If you're waiting until the last minute or you're not applying to them, then you know you, your chances are lower of getting some of those. The question really too, when we go back to the cost of college and the financial aid is how much are you relying on scholarship money? Because those aren't guaranteed. So you don't wanna to rely too much on scholarship money to be able to help pay for college. You wanna rely on some of the other sources Sources of financial aid. And if you get scholarships, that's great. That's additional money that you can put towards um, your, um, your cost of college, but um, they're not a guarantee. So, you know, you want to kind of keep those in your peripheral vision and make sure you're applying and doing your work, but maybe that's not your main source of financial aid that you're looking for. We also have some upcoming college and career fairs. Um, so this is on our website as well. Um, and the hyperlinks are on the flyer. So you can click on them and go directly to their website if you need to sign up. Um, the UC ones, it looks like they were this past week, um, but there are others still coming up. So the NACAC National College Fair, um, the Association of Independent California Colleges and Universities, um, the Regional Admissions Counselors. So these are all different organizations and groups of colleges that come together to have um, college fairs. And so another place for you to meet representatives from those colleges, another way for you to make those connections. Um, and then the CSU has one. I don't think we have the link yet, but it's in October. So we'll make sure to get that link on there once we have it um, for the CSU virtual campus weeks. So we are here for you guys. Ms. Berner, I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to say, um, but please know that your counselors are here to help. We're here to support you. Um, you know, even though we're all virtual, we are all accessible and um, we want to make time to help you guys get through this. Um, we're excited. It's a, I, this is one of my favorite times of the year is helping students choose their colleges and figure out where they're going to apply. And then the even better part is in May when they come in and they tell me this is where I'm going or they decided what, what college they're going to. And it's such, they're usually wearing their college sweatshirt and they're super excited and they might have a lanyard or a little something they picked up at the bookstore. And so it's really exciting. Um, I always tell students, the more open-minded you are, the more, um, you can, look outside the box and, and just consider so many different schools, the more opportunities you will find. If you're limited and you're focused on just a couple schools and that's really your only uh, goal and intention, you may be missing out on a lot of opportunities. So really just keep your, keep your mind open, do that research and um, find, find those great schools that are out there because they're out there. Yeah, and what I was going to say is just a reminder that um, October 1st is the FAFSA. Um, I downloaded the parent and student worksheet so you can have, um, it's just it's just the worksheet, so you can have all that information ready to go to input it um, on next Thursday, and um, it's based on your 2019 tax return, so don't forget that date. And then I was going to see if Ms. Ramirez and Ms. Ho, they've been monitoring the chat, is there any questions that are coming up that we need to address? 
as a whole. No, they've had really great questions, but I don't think anything has to be addressed. Okay, good. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. We didn't have this many questions last week, so it's great. Um, again, we will have um, this posted on our website and our YouTube channel at Westview Counseling. Um, and thank you all for attending, and we did it within the one hour span. So, bye. Join us next week, too, for our um, college application basics next Tuesday night. UC, CSU, and Common App. We'll go through those a little bit more in depth. Perfect. So we have a date for next week.